My name is Mika Yamamoto, and I'm a Regional Operations Manager for LA County Department of Parks and Recreation. And it is my department that is um, initiating and taking some leadership about doing needs assessment and park assessments. With me today, we have Sheila and Michelle from our Planning and Development. And then also with me is uh, Kevin Murray, he's from our Recreation Operations Section. And then we have Stefan and Ishmael from Beaches and Harbor. Uh, we are here to talk really about parks, but if you have anything else that comes up, on a side note, we are here to help with that too. And our hope is, is that we can get you guys to be thinking about your unincorporated community here in Marina Del Rey, and looking at it as a broad picture, wondering, gosh, what do we need? Now, you guys are very fortunate. Well, I think you're very fortunate. I don't live in this community, but I look at this beautiful landscape and think, gosh, I'd love to live here. But when you live here as a resident, right, you get to think about, gosh, I wish we had this, or I wish we had that. And it's an open space or a park need. Today's a great day to be, I'm going to use the word dreaming, <laughs> dreaming about that. Dreaming to think broadly about your unincorporated community. What kinds of park needs do you have? And what would you like to share with us? Because our hope today is that once we meet, we get some great brainstorming ideas going today, we will be able to remake a report to the LA County Board of Supervisors. And it will be the first step in letting them know what your community would like. We are doing this across the county. So today I cannot commit that all of these projects will be completed but it will start us thinking about it as a county organization. Um, we're going to have an opportunity after we go through some exercises with my colleagues about some, our brainstorming, as I mentioned, with some park project ideas. And once we get our brainstorming and some park project ideas um, on some paper, we'll also take a vote at the end. And at the end, hopefully, we can identify the top 10 amenities, ideas, projects that we create today together. Well, we're already um, at a huge deficit of park needs, and that comes from the general plan. There's a general plan, and yes. there's so much park space that's required for residential buildup that you have in the marina. We were at a deficit of 32 acres in 1996, <coughs> and then from 1996 to now, we are at a 15.5 acre deficit. Mm -hmm. And so the county owes us so much, just as it is now. And uh, where, what's the canvas? Where are the opportunities? So I agree with you. I think we have a park deficit in a number of our areas. Hi there. My name is Sheila, and I'm uh, a park planner with LA County Parks and Recreation. I'm with the Planning and Development Agency. And to briefly answer your question, I hope once we go through this whole presentation, uh, you will be more informed about uh, the purpose of this meeting and, and what our intention, intentions are. Uh, but to answer your question, you're right. The county, uh, based on the county general plan standard, is four acres per thousand people. And uh, as Mika mentioned, uh, we know that most communities in LA County uh, are under that four acres per thousand standard. And so this effort is uh, a response to that need, to that deficit. We know there, there are park needs in LA County, uh, but we haven't really had a grasp on what does that really mean? What does that look like? What are the numbers? And the Board of Supervisors has directed our department, LA County Parks, to lead this effort to really find out what are our assets and what are our needs? Well, what is enforcement? Because we've already been told that, just to follow up with this, we were told that every developer had to put in money into a coastal improvement fund to create these parks. We got an audit done that shows that the county failed in managing that. And this is tied to permits that the developers got. So what I'd like to see is you start pulling those permits away. And that was the deal that was made. That is the law. And we want to see something happening to make the law work. Because that's why we're at a deficit. Nobody's paying attention. And it's not fair to the residents or to the citizens of the state of California. Because this was supposed to be not just for residential parks, 
This is Marina Del Rey. It's supposed to be a major park opportunity. It should be um, something grand that the state of California would be proud of. It it's that it's become residential, and there's plenty of enough park for that. Mm -hmm. We don't have a soccer field. We don't have a baseball field. We don't have an Olympic-sized swimming pool. We don't have any of these things. What you're saying about permitting and enforcing permits is a really valuable comment, and I don't want to lose it. So I'm going to ask Kevin. Uh, we have a board in the back, and so anytime we have a comment about a non-specific, non-park project comment, we're going to write it on this board. And after the meeting, I would ask that if you have a comment that goes on that board, that you would talk with me or Nika or Michelle. We can have a discussion about the non-park projects, but I want to keep us on track. Okay. So that's actually a very good idea. And, and, and at the end, we can make sure that those notes are available to everybody. Yes. My park is the by the creek waterway. That is literally the only park within walking distance of me. And it's it's actually a wonderful resource if you like bird watching, which I do. But you know, uh, you know, a very nice couple moved in next door, they have two small boys. That is their park. It sounds like what you're saying is there's a need for more parks. Yeah. And the purpose of the needs assessment is to conduct a comprehensive analysis of the park inventory, the park assets, and the park needs all over LA County. And so as Mika mentioned, this is a countywide effort. That means uh, all the 48 unincorporated communities and the 88 cities in LA County are participating in this effort. Uh, it's uh, never been done before. And uh, so we have been spending uh, the better part of the last year working on um, doing an inventory of what are condition of the parks in our communities all over. And so we have, uh, in order to make this a digestible uh, effort, we've um, split the communities into what we're calling study areas. And the study areas are really consistent with existing community boundaries. So the Marina Del Rey study area is consistent with the unincorporated boundary of Marina Del Rey. Parts of Marina Del Rey are in the city boundary parts are in the county, and so are we talking about all of that? We are talking, for the purpose of this study, we are talking about the boundary that is shown on that map. The city of LA is also participating in this effort, and so uh, they are covering the, uh, that portion, that Palms, Mar Vista community that's right adjacent, that some of the meetings have already happened, and uh, if you live in a community that's not Marina Del Rey and you found, have found that your meeting has already happened or if you cannot make the meeting in your community, uh, I invite you to visit uh, our website, which is lacounty.parkneeds.org. And there's a survey you can fill out and provide your input. Um, Marina Del Rey, unincorporated park, is public land that was purposed for recreational use for the people of Los Angeles County. So my question to you is, is Marina Del Rey included in the materials and information that you are dispersing in all of these other areas? Because the needs assessment for Marina Del Rey needs to encompass the entire county's needs since we are a recreational destination for the entire county. And so there would be maybe an overlay of interests there are the local needs and interests, but then there are the countywide needs and interests, and we need to know what is being done to assess the countywide needs. Sure. And so the, the, need, the needs, as we have found them to be, will go into the report for Marina Del Rey. Right, but we need to know what people in the San Francisco and that we need for Marina Del Rey. Is that being assessed in your report? We are, as, well, I don't no, think so. so. Oh, no. they, they are assessing the need based on the population of Marina Del Rey. I think what you're asking is, are, is Marina Del Rey being considered as a regional amenity? Well, a regional amenity. Yes, as it relates to the parks needs assessment, the needs of Marina Del Rey are based on the population and the, of the Marina Del Rey as Describe so local, local needs. Okay. Local needs. This is a local park needs assessment. I will say that um, beaches and harbors 
because Marina Del Rey is unique because there's the beach aspect and then there's a local park infrastructure here. So Beaches and Harbors is doing, uh, they are submitting a report to talk about um, needs uh, related to the beaches and the harbors uh, that will go as an addendum into the park needs assessment. Will they be doing public meetings like you to assess? They are here today, and so oh, any, okay. they're here today. Can that a question? Yes, yes. at some point. Yes. Yes. Great. And thank you for doing this, by the way. I'm really happy to see you here. Thank you so much for coming. This is a great turnout. As uh, Shiva mentioned, to this effort that will take a look at regional uh, facilities, but those are kind of on a different process. Um, so the study area itself, um, if you're not familiar, it's bounded um, to the uh, north and northeast by Admiralty Way and Washington Boulevard. Um, and then on the west to the Theodore Columbia Marina. Louder, be louder. Sure, can you, we can't hear you back here, I'm sorry. Okay. Is the microphone on? Yeah. The microphone is on. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it Theodore or Via Marina? Well, it, it's Via Marina. It's, for, it's actually both. So it's Via Dolce for a short time. We're in Harold. We're in Harold. Well, Bio Marina is the, the large uh, boundary line, and then Bayona Wetlands um, on the, thank you, that's better, Bayona Wetlands um, to the southeast, and then, um, sorry, I forgot what the, no, the, um, the north, uh, the northwest, is that Admiral? Yeah, that's Admiral Two Way. So you can see in the, um, distance at Sentinella and Jefferson. There's also a little piece of unincorporated county that was added into this study area because they're, uh, this is the closest study area for that site. Um, so within the study area, there are um, only four parks currently. Burton Chase Park, which we're in now, uh, Marina Beach, uh, Marina Del Rey Pocket Park, and then Yvonne the Burke Park, which is a linear. Where is the Pocket Park? Um, I need the beaches and harbor. Stephon, can you identify the pocket park on this map? It's very negligible. Um, you can see it's not even uh, a third of the park. Do you mind work park? Sorry, we're lacking a, a pointer. But it's the linear park here, so it's uh, a linear park with trail and fitness uh, amenities. Yes. Where was that street? Sorry, where was that? I didn't see that. What street is that, do you know? The Park is at Fiji Way and Lincoln Boulevard. So that's, uh, again, that's only uh, so Fiji is over here, not over here. Fiji and Lincoln, they call that Park. Really? Do you kind of think about it in advance? So, um, in terms of the amount of park acres within the study area, we have 26.8 acres, and that's um, for a population of just under 7,500. Um, and that equates to 3.6 acres of park for 1,000 residents. This is so wrong. Um, I'm just uh, letting us go through the presentation, and then we can uh, enter you know, into some conversations. But if we could at least kind of get through the information and then we can fill in the blanks as necessary. I think that would probably be um, the best approach. So in terms of the 3.6 acres per 1,000 residents, uh, that's kind of the common uh, metrics that are used when you're looking at a uh, park plan. You can see that this is above the county average of 3.3 acres per 1,000 residents, um, but we still are not achieving our park plan goal, which is to uh, have uh, four acres of park local parkland specifically uh, for 1,000 residents. So um, there definitely is a need. And with this um, assessment, we tried to kind of have a more comprehensive look at what park need actually is, where we typically only looked at the acreage. Uh, we've tried to also look at other elements, like um, how accessible are the parks to the community. Um, and then also the, dense, me, the density around parks because that kind of plays into the condition. Uh, you know, obviously if there are higher densities uh, used and um, you know, get run down more quickly. Um, so this is just uh, a composite of park need against 
again, it was the aid and need, so the entire study area um, does have an identified need for parkland, as uh, you all kind of contributed here to today, or noted. Um, the, in terms of distance to parks, um, the area that's in orange kind of shows a higher need, so um, the southeastern portion of the study area has the higher need in terms of distance. Um, and then overall, the population density doesn't play too much of a, um, a factor in the overall park need. So the, the largest um, illustration kind of shows the composite of those three elements. Um, and so again, the areas in orange are where there's a higher need. The areas in yellow are more moderate. And then um, there really aren't any green areas, which indicates that there's a, a high to moderate need for uh, parks in the community. Can we ask questions about the what's up on the sidewalk? So under population density, which is kind of a, a, a green, yeah, uh, to the very far right at the top, are they saying that the density of that area, the marina, is very low? Uh, yes. So, um, and, and, and so my follow-up question on that is then, are they, uh, there's a whole lot of building going on with a, an enormous number of people that, uh, or units, I should say, that will, will come that will come that are not, it's changing our, our skyline, it's changing grass density, it's really changing everything for us. And so I'm wondering, when this was prepared, was this based on those projected No, this is, um, this is based on census information. So those current residents at the time the census was done. The last census being in 2010 census? Yes. Okay. So here's the 2010 census. Okay. So that was before, what is that? Sure. So my question is, are we going to be, do you have access to, I assume you must, because somewhere in planning, they, they've got a projected number of people and units and population. So, okay. I guess to, um, I'm sorry to cut you off. So no, it's not this effort, you know, again, is taking into account um, census information. And that the condition that you're talking about in terms of having, you know, development that is, uh, you know, up and coming is really something that we're experiencing throughout the county. So in order to undertake this kind of effort, you know, we're, we're trying to get a sense of what is on the ground um, you know, we have to use those current figures. So um, I think it's a point well taken that, um, you know, obviously the our densities are only going to continue to increase. And I think that's really one of the reasons that we're trying to, um, you know, uh, endeavor to really understand the needs because it's not getting better. You know, we're going to always be threatened by development. So we want to make sure um, that we're doing what we can to, you know, come up to our goal of having at least four acres. Okay, but my request is that in relation to Marina Del Rey specifically, because certain parts of the county are already saturated and they are not necessarily going to be um, having the more changes that we are, that even even though I understand you cannot go through every single one, can, can you guys at least do that in relation to the marina, knowing that the marina is undergoing something, you know, I think percentage changes that, that are beyond what you would normally see, I think, in the rest of the county. You see, I, I think we can you know, document that um, that sentiment. I'm not sure if we'll be able to actually you know, come back and revisit specific areas in that way because, again, we're trying to create an equitable process you know, that's um, throughout the county of 10 million people. So we... Um, you know, I think the condition you're describing, it doesn't necessarily exist in all of the study areas. But so shopping in the ones where it does exist, and the information is easy for you to, to factor in. That's, that's all I'm saying. Otherwise, whatever you assess is, is not based on fact. And that's what you're going for, right? Is assessments based on actual fact. Yes, but if, if we're applying the same census, like the same figures from the same year, that's a way to kind of have a baseline that's equalized throughout the county. So in order for us to have, I think, a process that is fair um, to all communities, it, we have to kind of treat them all equitably.
Castle 9 be available for a park. It is empty. It is owned by the county. You have allocated it to a 288-room hotel that we don't need. We want it to be a park to take care of the residents. All this looking, we've been fighting for this and the fact that I really appreciate you being here, but to not even know that it exists and it's not even taken into consideration of what you're doing, we're going to have yet another hotel for absolutely no reason when we can't walk, we can't play, we can't see our skies anymore. And you won't be able to get down the street because there's so much building going on. The LAUS is still one way that services in this area. Ten years ago, there was 300 students. Today, there's 550 wow. students at that elementary school. That means population has doubled in this area because it's only serving Washington Boulevard, Marina Del Rey, to Venice Boulevard. That's it. So those kids there, over 550 students, live in this area, have no place to play. Okay, so if yeah. I could, just because we want to try and get over that kind of time, you're you know, trying to get this in two hours. So um, I don't think with the three or the five of us that are here, we can respond to the comments that you've made uh, on behalf of the county. These are things that I am not fully aware of and, and something that I don't normally do um, because I'm more of a parks person uh, and not necessarily a planning and development person from maybe regional planning. Um, but what I was going to say is, you know, I really think it's important that we hear what they say, take these notes back to the folks that we have to report back to with their concerns. So that we can say things like, we use, at least I said we share that, but you reuse. Their concern was that the growth has been growing quite rapidly in this area, and they want us to say that to our consultants that are helping us with the project. Right? So as we can do that in those notes that in Stefan, Stefan, are you taking these notes for us? It's very important. So one was that the census that we used was from 2010. The comment that you made, I'm sorry, was that... What I understand from reading the legal documentation is that when... When this part, the Marina Del Rey area, 950 acres, were originally turned over to mm -hmm. be the marina. Mm -hmm. They were set aside for all of the people of Los Angeles County. Okay. And the, that was for boating mm -hmm. and outdoor recreation. And what has happened is that between 1954, mm -hmm. when the county, the city of Los Angeles, and the federal government all contributed somewhat equal amounts mm -hmm. of money, to do this program, it was with the concept that the entire area would be set aside for recreation. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there was any concept except for areas where people would enjoy the outdoors. And at this point, leases, there are over 100 leases that have been given to the county uh, supposedly owns the land. Okay. but. The leases themselves are mostly to private corporations who have made a ton of money in the last 60 years, building hotels, apartments, and other things, and then making money for the county. When the county paid off the bond issue that supported their portion of building the marina, uh, when that was paid off, what they started doing is taking all of this money and putting it in to the general fund. So it helps, you know, various and sundry things that the entire county does. I believe that these parcels should be looked at and reviewed. And as these leases are expiring, what should be happening is we should be looking at these leases and saying this place and that place should be torn down. I've looked at, you know, not all of the leases, but some of the leases, and what I've seen is that in each of the leases that I looked at, there is a provision for tearing down whatever they built because they only had a 49 or a 50 or a 60 year lease. And so as these, can, they, these leases come up to be renewed, the county is really rushing 
to get these leases changed into the old owners and the builders and developers. And I think we really need to look at this whole prospect of what was the purpose of this in the beginning and why do we continue to do what we're doing? And yes. should we some of them be yes. yes. okay. So, the original purpose of Marina Del Rey has been, has gone haywire, right? <laughs> we have leases out here, the Piggy Fields, and there are leases out here that may not be appropriate or inappropriate and should be reviewed and go back to the initial purpose of why the, the land that was set aside for recreation, what's happening to it, right? I mean, I, yeah. she said that much more eloquently than I did, but yeah. if we were to our that notes, that's kind of what we need, right? Okay. So I just want to make sure we got that. I, again, I'm going to move on if, if I can, because if we don't move on, we're never going to get out of here. If not, you're a big error on the map that I just want to point out. Okay, error on the map. Yeah. Um, okay, the map says a certain area yeah. near the marina. And mm -hmm. just go back to, yeah, there. Okay. So on the bottom, the yes. big, big green part, uh -huh. a big part of that is part of the state-owned ecological reserve, the Bayana Wetlands Ecological Reserve, mm -hmm. 139 acres. And so if you took that out, mm -hmm. because right now no one's allowed to go there or anything, the state's kind of got locked up, and that that kind of changes the per ratio. acre ratio. I, I don't get that. So I think that yeah. that state land needs to not be part of it. I, I understand what you're saying. Because there's no access to it. If there's access to it, then our per acre ratio would work. And then what you're kind saying. Of holding access. I understand. I can uh, clarify that. That actually wasn't included in the, the amount oh. of local park acreage. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, there was just 26.8 acres. Our parks are shrinking. This pocket park that you guys referenced, so that's on Fiji Way. That might as well be on the Autobahn. It's like 100 miles an hour those cars go through there. The other park on the other side, how many kids, how many of you guys have taken pictures of kids in that park? All, all the exercise track. I mean, who's, who's representing us? I appreciate you guys coming in here, and I really do, but there's a lot of frustration here because we come to these meetings, we talk, we talk, we talk. This parcel of land is on uh, uh, Tahiti Way has been there for 28 years. Its original purpose was a park. Yeah. And then it came in, and, people, and then you guys, Parks and Recreation and Harbors, decided to give it to a land developer, and then we stopped it. And we just keep going in circles. We have these meetings, you guys show us maps. We're talking about parks that um, my son would never play in that park on Fiji Way. Yes. And he would never play on that road park because it's too dangerous. And also the small boaters. I have a boat. I watched Nelly Beaches and Harbors kick all the boat slips out from 20 feet and under. This was a marina for everybody, not for the elite. What's happening here is we're being gentrified in Newport Beach down here. Who is watching us? Yes. And we just want to make sure that all of your points are made onto our notes because we need to share that with our bosses. Um, and, and, and I do appreciate you being so, so, you know, kind to us and not beating us up over something that we, we cannot control. However, we can control taking notes, doing our role, taking back that information to our bosses, and then um, also hopefully making our objective today about getting some ideas from you. Because that's part of today's meeting too, is that, yes, we hear, you know, some of the concerns from the history of the past, and I, I don't want to really dive into all of that because I don't know it. But what I do know is what we're trying to do, our Department for Parks and Recreation is trying to do, is to figure out a roadmap for the future. What is it that we can do to correct maybe the stuff that happened in the past, or like I said earlier, dream day, to figure out what else we can do. You know, across the county, and in every assessment meeting I've been to, I went to one in South Los Angeles, I represented the South Los Angeles area and the Lower Heights area, okay? So I have really diverse communities. But both communities said we love green space, we want open space. Right, my South Los Angeles residents, park users, are telling me we want more, we want more, and they're very densely populated. Tough, tough situation. In Royal Heights and in the uh, Hacienda area, they are very fortunate. They have more parks, but they still have more because they see their kids growing, their grandkids growing there. And it gives us an opportunity from a department perspective to capture all that, to do our best to set forward what we hear. And for our job today is to try and capture all of that. So if we could get back, to give you Michelle some time here to let them get through their slides, and then we're going to be talking about park projects 
and then uh, wrapping this up and taking back our 10 top priorities for your community back to our bosses. Okay. You reference Hacienda and the highest and all these other, but all due respect, your property is not as much as worth as what we have here. That piece of land up on parcel 9, that's a hundred million dollar piece of property alone, if not, if not more so. So someone has to take care of us and make sure all that we're being vetted properly. Because I said, I watched my friends lose their boats that lived, that had boats that didn't make a lot of money that lived on their boats because beaches and harbors decided to make more room for 30 foot slips. We're losing, we lost the marina. We can't keep losing the property. That's all we have left. We live right across that building. I know for a fact that that new residence to shore went from a thousand people to three thousand people is it's becoming, instead of a recreation area as it was originally identified for, it is becoming more commercial use. Yes. And the population yes. is yes. exponentially yes. growing and taking away that recreational it's to be Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Is that, can I, is that yes. a you? Well, I would like to add in that he made an initial comment and really needs to be heard by everyone here, you guys, is that you keep on having these meetings here, and it seems like when you go back to do the analysis, it's like, Everything gets taken off, that somehow gets lost, and we get more development here. So our concerns, even though we're all here on Saturday, like you said, it's very, very tough, it just goes for naught. And it's like, no one's listening. So we can come here and, you know, shout to all the blue in the face and really be angry, but when those, when those notes get in the decision maker's hands, it's all just going to find a haywire. So well, it's so any way that you can... The department has never been here. Okay. This is new. Yeah. Yeah. This is new. So, as uh, the department on your behalf has been here before, we've, we've dealt with these before. We have all different agencies that come up and say, hey, what do you think, public? Yeah. And every time they go back to their, their silos, yeah. it always gets lost in translation. So, I didn't mean to That was one of the okay. first things. So, so, just so you know, and thank you for more mentioning Parks has been here for the first time today, is we are going to have a website at, at the end of this in which you can track what our department is doing with our consultants and our partners for this particular needs assessment, park assessment, you know, workshop and, and project that we have. Now, in all of that, I think um, you can track that to make sure we're doing what we need to do. It is a very big county, so there are other folks that you probably want to be in touch with. We can give you some names and numbers of people from regional planning, right? We probably do your community plan for this area. Um, of course, you've got some representative from Beaches and Harbor. I think they're probably closely connected to things that you do in this community. So we will do our best to transport that information back. Um, we do, in the end, have to give this report to the Board of Supervisors. And ultimately, you know, they're the bosses of all the county departments, right? So we will share your comment about what you just said. You know, feel like you give it to one department and they work it out and the notes get lost and here we are in another department. So we got gotcha, you. And we will do our best to communicate that for you. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to. I have a real simple question that will help get you back on track. Okay. Back on track. Okay. You mentioned that uh, you have 3.6 acres per thousand total from the four parks, and so by your math, I'm trying to. I, I was. Uh, I did the wrong math at first, <laughs> and uh, I I wanted the 3,000 acres I came up with under my control, but. Um, <laughs> It's really three acres you're looking for oh, yeah. to get you yeah, up yeah, to the, according to your census numbers, that would get you to the four acres. Ah. But in actuality, we need a lot more acres sure. and we need to have them better used yes. than we have in the past. Yep. Yep. Do you have a, do you have a plan that you're presenting or you're just trying to get into So we're just presenting data in terms of a plan that we're trying to arrive at, that's where really like to be able to have a focus meeting to, to get there. Um, while we understand kind of the issues and concerns that you're presenting, um, you know, we'll share them to the best of our ability with the appropriate departments, but I do think, you know, those are kind of outside our purview and are within planning, but I would like to just kind of get us back to, well, what can we do here today? Because um, just to speak candidly, you know, we're pro parks. We work for uh, parks and recreation. This is what we do, and I think for most of us, it's our passion. So, you know, we're already starting kind of as like-minded individuals. We want to know what you need here and what are your priorities. So, in turn, when we go back and start doing, you know, planning county-wide, we have talked to you and understand, you know, explicitly what is needed for the area. 
So, um, you know, again, while the, the, it sounds like there are some, you know, significant issues um, you know, that are going on here with development that, of course, play a part in, you know, kind of how your quality of life in the community. Um, if we can get back to kind of what we can do here today, and that's um, just to briefly go over kind of the inventory and the data that we have collected so far, and then um, provide the opportunity to get ideas and um, create a list of projects that um, in turn you'll all have the opportunity to vote on. So when we leave here today, we're going to have a list of 10 projects that, um, the top 10 projects that kind of are. Um, so in terms of the amenities that are provided here, this pretty much just substantiates what we're hearing you tell us here today. Um, you can see that um, for most of these, tennis courts, basketball courts, baseball fields, multi-purpose fields, skate parks, those are um, amenities that are not available to your community at all right now. Um, we're the study area. <laughs> yeah, we're in the study area, correct. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, so what those other um, you know, colors indicate is how it compares to the county, how it compares to um, you know, the top cities within the state, and then how it compares to the um, top cities throughout the nation. So, um, you know, it, it clearly indicates that we have a long way to go, um, you know, in this study area. And then the next slide, you know, again, um, there are no swimming pools, splash pads, gymnasiums, um, or senior centers within the study area. Um, there are playgrounds, dog parks, uh, community recreation centers, and restrooms. So, um, you know, you've showed up and indicated that there are uh, plenty of items that you have to leave your community uh, to go to, and um, the information that we collected uh, that does support that. Notice something especially about this. There's a wildlife preserve. Um, a wildlife preserve can be a park. For this study, you know, we're looking at local serving recreation amenities. So, um, things, yeah, it's just, um, they're usually captured like a special use area, so they're treated a little differently, kind of like our regional facilities are. Uh, for for development. Yeah, they've already said to us that opportunity <coughs> charge based to is your park and so is the wetland portion of nine years. That is also your park. And they're not open to the public at all. Because of safety and health reasons and because it's insane. It's in your lap line boundary of your county yeah. area of Lumen already. But because regional planning manages that, not beaches and harbors. Beaches and harbors wouldn't have identified it for the parks department as park space. So we can Stephon, you can write down Oxford Basin, um, you can kind of flag that for future follow-up. Because you know, it's, 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 again, you're right, it's not in the study area. It's not identified as a parkland for the study, so we have to find out um, if that, in fact, is getting to go back to the So, is it marshland or, or wetlands that you were talking about? Mud basin. It's marshland and upland and walking areas are going to be built there. Okay. So, is there a name for this property? Oxford Basin. Okay. Gotcha. Oxford Basin. All right. Oxford Basin is um, a, a wetland, a marshland, right? And where is it? Washington Boulevard. On Washington Boulevard. Uh, uh, across from the Marina City Tower. It's known as the Oxford Flood Basin. Okay. Oxford Flood uh, Basin could be also considered parkland. No, but not now. Not for two no, years. Not, it has not for two years. It hasn't been for the past It has not. Years. Okay. And so as a result of that, you're suggesting that the county look at this as a whole, not by department by department, but including it into the discussion we're having today over open space, parks, wetlands. Okay. What we're saying actually is you cannot use a flood basin for credits or park credits. You cannot use a flood basin for park credits. That, and you can't use a wetland for recreational park credit. Um, so you can see in the yellow area, um, I think they're in pretty good condition. Park, parks that have the tourist features um, would be Yvonne Burke Park, all of the fitness uh, zones that are identified in that park are in, um, I think, poor condition. 
um, and then also at Marina Beach, the picnic shelters um, are in disrepair. So I think there's some projects that Beaches and Harbors has uh, that are coming up to uh, share with you related to some of those. Bill from uh, Beaches and Harbors, you're going to come up and talk about her projects in, in the Marina community, right? Yes. Right. Here we go. Thank you, Mika. Hi, uh, I wanted to actually uh, thank Mika and Michelle and Sheila and everyone here from Parks because I want to make it clear that this is a it's a county parks department uh, workshop. Uh -huh. There are some of you that are really familiar with how the marina is structured, how the department is structured, how the county works here in Marina Del Rey. We talked about leases, we talked about uh, existing open parks, and that's exactly the kind of information that uh, parks um, and recreation needs right now to collect from you. Where they think you are, where you think they are, and what data needs to be collected. You mentioned the shores, uh, which is a really good example. Thank you. It's a really good example of how it works. Here. I don't know when the data from the census was collected in 2010. I don't know if construction had started. I don't know uh, what was happening right around that time when the, uh, the data was collected, but it's a really good point. You want to make sure that the data that they have is accurate and represents the population as it is maybe, you know, what it was then. It's, and that's exactly what they need here. Um, and that's what they're doing now. They're collecting all that feedback, and at the end, when they're done with this project, they're going to present it to the Board of Supervisors, and they're going to tell them whether you know, overall in the county or where whether certain uh, districts, like say Marina del Rey, are, uh, don't have some bit sufficient open space, or whether the existing open space is underutilized. So that's what they need to know, and they are collecting good information from all of you. And I really appreciate you, and I appreciate you know, Price and Red. Uh, so what they've asked us to do is to go over a, certain, a few projects here in the Marina. Uh, some of you have seen these, that they presented to the Design Control Board. And these, again, these are projects uh, that are currently being planned uh, and reviewed by either building safety or regional planning. Uh, and these projects are in, again, in parks, like here, Chase Park, that are currently public parks. And, and this is what we have. This is uh, one of them, Marina Beach, which is located at the corner of New Marina and Admiralty Way, is currently has picnic shelters and big parking lot and a promenade and Marina Beach. And what we're going to do in this at this site is replace the existing pavilion, which is really outdated, built in the 1960s. And we're going to replace it with new picnic shelters, new barbecues, new uh, sound areas. We're going to replace the existing promenade about 1,600 square feet, or linear feet, uh, along the promenade along Marina Beach. That will be replaced, all the concrete that's existing will be replaced with a, a, a very new and nicer aggregate mix poor concrete. Uh, the so poor concrete or, or is it um, like beveled bricks? Uh, no, it'll be poor concrete, but it'll be a, a, it's an aggregate mix. It's, it's, a very, it's not just concrete, it's a very, it looks really good in design, it's, it's an expensive. Uh, we deserve it. It's, it's very nice. Well, they we don't want to just pay more. That's why they're doing Part of the whole needs assessment is knowing what the public wants, what the public needs, and then ultimately, part of the goal of the park needs is to be able to fund for projects that the public needs in the future. Where's the money coming from? It to develop. For? Taxes. For this improvement of Mother's Beach. This improvement came from, the, from funds that were approved by the Board of Supervisors. From so where? It came from the overall the general fund or either from multiple sources, either facility or, or maintenance funds that we have as a department or new funds that were either transferred from other, from other sources in, in, in the county's fund. According to the, according to the website, Investigation. It says that the money for that is going to come from the coastal 
That's what Fred was doing. A lot of these projects are not, are not they're actually these are not funded by a capital. That's a very different section. Our project is the capital project fund. The, the capital project section is all of the projects are not based by the funding you just mentioned. These are all either from a proposition you passed or from a maintenance fund or from another fund that's not necessarily comes from just from our other projects. A lot of the funds come from county approved. Which so, you're not going to use the Postal Improvement Fund for anything? I am not familiar with you know, how much money that there is available for that or whether it's going to be used. But well, that is a good question. That's what you want to do is tell us how you want the funds to address, how and where you want to spend, and what you need. That, Isn't you know, that's this what you the need. end of bond measure? You guys want us to vote on something. Yes? I mean, eventually, it's not part of this? We are not, uh, actually there is no bond measure uh, that is happening that we know of right now. That's the purpose of the this assessment. The purpose of the state's assessment is to provide the Board of Supervisors with a report to say, to let them know what the needs are in LA County that will guide future decisions, be it a bond measure, be it any local or state funding that could become available. They would have this guiding document to let them know where the money should be spent. And I believe, so you're talking about projects. projects that are already funded. Yes. Is that right? right? They're in design, they're in the primary design. Right. Oh. Uh, so this is the, the bulk house. It's out there right now in the, park, the mix of the parking lot. It is currently, as it's a C scout, originally built for the C scouts. This project has been closed out for about a few years now because it's been under renovation. There are two phases originally uh, approved for this for this site to make it ADA compliant. Uh, the first phase was approved, which was the improvements to the first floor. The second phase was to make the second floor uh, ADA compliant, and that included building a new uh, elevator. Uh, ever since the, this site has been closed off, and now the plans to finish it off and to not only make the second floor ADA compliant with the elevator. But it also includes the, the use of the top, the, the rooftop area for assembly area, and the elevator, which is you can see up in the, in the left, both of these on the left and right. You can see that projection up above. That's the, uh, the elevator shaft. So it will also be up the rooftop area for assembly area, and it will also be in compliance. Uh, and so this is one part of the boathouse project. What is the boathouse used for? It will be used for, for meeting rooms, just like this building here. And it has restrooms that will be renovated as part of the project, too. That will be ADA compliant. A lot of what you see out there that we used to see before is not ADA compliant. So all of that will be ADA compliant. This is we're going off on a tangent. It seems like we're talking about meeting rooms. We're now losing focus to what this means. It's a public project in the open space lines. This is another part. This is the other part of the Bowhouse project. Here, what you see out there is the existing layout of the parking area. Just outside the boat house, there's a curve, there's an existing uh, driveway that is really kind of sectional. That's going to be removed, and this is going to be replaced with the walking area. This is not for us. This is this is for it's a public it's part of a public project. It's to increase the amount of users. It's not for our use. Okay, so it's not for our use. Sorry, my dad. Well, this is not a part. Yes, I am. You have a vote. I do. That's why you're interested. For everybody else. I'll try to finish my my presentation so that we can provide more feedback to the public. Talking about meeting rooms, and we don't need to know about meeting. We want to know about what our kids are going to be able to play. Okay, that's, that's a fair question. Part of this, part of this project also includes you expand what is currently seen here. The, the current um, storage unit is outside. Then we remove initially one last sleeping and walking areas and picnic areas, picnic, picnic tables that will be used. And that's what we've got. Do you want to uh, the Burnt Park along the other two way, there, that is about, a, it's about an eight, uh, eight acre park. It has two parking lots, it has the bike path, 
it has uh, asphalt walkways, it has benches, it has uh, sunlight, it has the uh, equipment, uh, parkour uh, equipment and signs out there. All that will be replaced and renovated with uh, new walkways, uh, new benches, new uh, a new park was equipment, uh, which is... And please don't take uh, out any more trees. No, 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 no trees. trees. No uh, trees. Is there restroom facilities within the park? There is no restroom at the park. And that's insane. Okay, you yes. really have to say you have one park here, and you don't have restroom facilities. Yeah, that was awesome. Okay. We're hearing an existing park amenity that is being renovated. Is there any other new amenities that are being added to the existing park, like the fitness zones at Yvonne Burke? We know that they're in very poor shape. Uh, a project could be to replace the fitness zones. Uh, or constructing a new park or specialty facility, which we've heard a lot about here. So those are the three types of park projects uh, that fall within the criteria of a park project. If you, if you want, thinking about a new community center or a new senior center, uh, if it's within a park, then it will count as a project. But you can't really have a discussion about a facility that is outside of a park boundary. Okay? What are the so, rules for restrooms? Uh, that can be a park project. So, so, huge park. Devon Burke has So, that would be a great project. Yes. To so have restrooms. Restroom. Really. So, just to give you some ideas, based on the amenities that Michelle briefly described about what is in the marina and what's not, just to get the conversation going, we know that some potential projects in Marina Del Rey, we are not advocating for these, but we just, we're starting the conversation. We know that basketball courts, gymnasium, a multi-purpose field, senior center, a skate park, soccer fields, splash pads, swimming pools, and tennis courts. We know that those are not amenities that are currently captured within the study area. It's a short public pool. It was supposed to be, but they took it away. It's a, it's a short public pool. The Shores is a, it's a private leasehold. Why did it get... Is it public or is it open to the public? I don't know if it's open to the public. No. 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 Uh, it was supposed to be, but... I they trip from your department says it is a public pool. So you're saying you have no idea if it's a public pool or not. I'm not my question. Okay. Should I talk you know what? Well, let's be fair to Ishmael. And I appreciate your question. And we'll get someone who probably should be answering the question for you back to you. We so originally there was um, areas identified for recreational use, which has changed along the way. I don't know why, but this is the concern that you all have. And I, I, I hear that, and it's been echoed a couple of times. So, well, I should have it a couple of times. So, if, if we can. So, we have departments that don't know what the other department knows. That's exactly right. And you say, hey, we don't know what we have. That's a good point. There's where we lose the translation. Sure. And, and, that's, and that is a very good point because we should, should be looking at this as a county fan and not just a park or a region of or a regional fan. I get that today. And that should be on our notes because this is a, this is something we want to tell them. Leave your, your name and if you would like to be contacted with your email as well. With that being said, if, if when you signed in you got dots, great. This is the time when you want to use them. If you didn't get a string of dots, please raise your hand right now or Kevin will. They're, they're voting dots, and so as we talk about projects, we're going to have a time of voting. So I want to make sure everyone has dots before we continue. So we also, also, most of, everyone's been here for 90 minutes. I don't know how many people parked in the Oh, okay. Room. So the Marina Del Rey study area is not analogous to the local Marina Del Rey community, which includes other areas outside the study area. If you want to assess local needs, it's only logical that you include all local residents. Yes. How are you going to assess the local needs of residents of the Marina Peninsula, Oxford Triangle, and parts of Del Rey, all of which are in the Marina Del Rey zip code, for Marina Del Rey Park needs. My name is Kathy Knight. I'm Conservation Chair of the Sierra Club Airport Marina Group. And um, I, what I'd like to see is uh, some things that represent nature, um, maybe a natural uh, walkway around the marina, and also to take into account 
the needs of the wildlife here. These are some of the birds across the, the way from the marina. Um, we have destroyed over 95% of our wetlands in California in the last 100 years. Um, there's hardly anything left, and these birds need to fly from Alaska to South America and back. And they've been using the marina. The marina was part of the wetlands. Um, and when it got destroyed, uh, they were supposed to have 40 acres, which they never got. And we have to speak up for the wildlife. They can't do it. They can't come to hearings like this. We have to speak up for the wildlife. So we need some places like that. One example would be on parcel 44. If we can, if we can get some of these parcels designed for huge development instead to be open space and you can do parks and some habitat. Oh. Um, can, can we write down parcel 44 back to that you guys catch that? as a project idea, right? Yes. Okay. And the other idea she had in there was a walkway around around the marina. Around the marina. So that's the parks. We need habitat and that can go near the parks. And we need mature trees, not totally trimmed off trees or small trees being rebuilt or something like that. Parcel forty four could be the gateway to the marina. It, instead of this big shopping center they want to put there with Trader Joe's. It could be like like landscape. With, with trees and, and, and be a beautiful entrance to the marina. And you could have some parkway, some parkway there. Um, parcel 9U could be habitat. It's a wetland. The last wetland left in the, in the whole marina. You know, the parks department needs to help support that. And, um, you know, this is what uh, Oxford Lagoon looked like before they bulldozed it. Yeah, they and, what? Turn it to the camera. Uh, to the camera. Sorry. Um, and um, they want to put a huge boat dock at the end here. We, we need to to think about that. And this is a picture of the wetland. I put it back in the back of the room. This is less than 100 years ago. Less than 100 years ago. With thousands of acres. You know? In less than 100 years, that's what we've done. And we, we need to look in the county of Los Angeles, in Marina Del Rey, we need to to start waking up and save the planet. These, all these huge developments that are supposed to go in are concrete. They, they increase global warming. The, the, the soil and the old growth trees that we can have in the parks and everywhere else around here could help avoid global warming. And the last thing I want to say is biophilic cities. Um, E.O. Wilson is a famous scientist and he came up with the word biophilia. It's love for other forms of life. And it's like you know, if a child is in a, in a stroller on a sidewalk and he sees a dog coming down, he goes, hi, doggy. You know, it's a, a, for, it's a love for other forms of life. Hello, everybody. My name is John Yass. I'm from Great Coalition. And for me, being a long recreational enthusiast, I'm trying to help the recreational voters here in Marina Del Rey. Parks have always been community connectors, meaning that when you go to a park, you meet your neighbors, and your neighbors meet your neighbors, and everyone comes together. So for me, this process is sort of broken down in that we're just looking at local parks, whereas I would like to go to a park in Venice, and I want to have a in and what those parks look like. I also want to go to a park in Playa del Rey. I also want to go to a park on the other side of the county. And so I think we're being actually given just a very limited amount of information here by which some of us recreational enthusiasts really want to have input on the, the parks assessment throughout Los Angeles County. And the way it started was the parks, uh, uh, the department head came in front of the board of supervisors and said, hey, we have an $800 million uh, needs assessment for, for parks. So he's asking for a lot of money. From what I understand, that's what instigated this study, is that the supervisors then said, of course, we need to find out what, what our needs are. So our needs, I think, first and foremost in this room, are to really understand what a park is. A park is not these little pocket parks, and we keep on seeing these develop. And if, if every one of you is a parks person, then you can safely say that, hey, that's not the way to go. And our Coach Commission made it very clear, don't give us any more pocket parks developers, because we're not going to accept it here. We want something that has public access, and we want something that has some kind of activity involved. And pocket parks don't do that. So, um, as much as we may say that Burton Chase is a great park, there's not a whole lot going on here. There may be, but then when we're showing, you know, looking at the, the boathouse, that's not going to be, again, that was a segue here, and that's unfair because 
we now don't really understand what the new expansion of those Burton Chase Farms is going to be like. And then secondly, when you gather this assessment, or when you make the assessment, when you make the analysis, we would like it to come back in front of us just to, again, go to what this showman said, and I've been here long enough and I've seen it happen, just to know that it didn't fall on deaf ears and didn't get lost in one of your silos, or you got to the supervisor and that's went, eh, you know, to come back and say, hey, this is what we're going to go in front of the supervisors with. We heard you loud and clear, and here it is. My name is Billy Hunter. I live in California. I'm 10 years old, and I just, when this first happened, when, when I first knew that over here, over here, that they were going to make a hotel, I was really shocked. Like, I did not know what was really going to happen. So then, when I figured out all these people were trying to go for the park to be built, I just thought that was going to be an amazing idea. I have 500 kids in my school, and there are, and literally, the park in our school is literally like a fourth of this whole entire room, and, and just like my dad said, it's not safe at the pocket park. I do not want to get myself killed. And then three, uh, Mother's Beach, my mom told me this, that... Okay, I my son is just a generation, ladies. Please respect my son, respect you, please love uh, Mother's Beach really deserves an F. Literally, the water is like sewage. <laughs> so, true. Okay, so I've got a question for you. Tell us if you had um, one wish, what kind of park would you like to see here? What kind of activities or stuff that you like to do? Down here, yes. there's giant areas. I would like to have so much stuff that does not contain a hotel like. Maybe a soccer field. Um, okay, soccer, soccer field. field. Yeah. What else? Baseball park court or something? A park court. Like an exercise park course? Yes. Exercise park course, project number two. And maybe a public pool. 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 Public Yes, we have to leave a lot of room for the nature okay. and maybe all the birds that live there. We don't want to conquer the whole entire area. Okay. And I've been inside that area before. Yes, you. Yeah, it's been inside there because my dad once passed his drone and we were looking for this. <laughs> Okay. So, all right. so I, I want to wrap up what Billy said. We did a fantastic job, first of all. But we got some project ideas for amenities. But he also wants to remind us that we have nature in this community. Okay. And we don't want to take that away. All right. And he's not finished yet. So I just want to wrap up what he said and let him finish. Okay. One more things that since I said before, that there's 500 kids in my school. Maybe yeah, even more than 500. Like. Sure, but, but anyways, all these three parks that I said, all those three parks are really, really like, not too good of a park. Um, Mother's Beach, no. And so let's say young kids in the school, like let's say pre Kers, kindergartners, first graders, etc., etc., really want to have like a birthday at the park. There's like no really nearby that good of a place. Not too good of a place to run. So that's why we should like make this huge area into a park where lots of kids can hang out with each other. Seniors can chill there. And we can do a lot of more stuff too, which probably a lot of people would like to enjoy at the park. Okay, so um, oh, yeah, that. Okay. Wow. Well, I think that concludes what we need to talk about today. Uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, you did such a good job. You were a highlight today in our
So, I do want to comment through something he said that I think is very important. He says, you want a place for kids to hang out that they feel safe. Right? So to me, he says, you know, a birthday party, that would be a picnic shelter location, right? Where it's just, it doesn't have to be huge, but a place for people to go and hang out. I love that. And um, if, if you sense some frustration in the, in the room, yeah. <laughs> Quite a few of us have been to the Board of Supervisors, we've been to meetings here, and as John said, uh, there's a sense of disenfranchisement, you know, because we speak and it seems to fall on deaf ears. And we understand that more than 50% of the revenue created by the marina goes to Olive Valley County. So there is, there is a strong sense of you know, don't forget us. You know, um, the big elephant in the living room that many of us have addressed is Parcel 9U, which Billy, Billy, it's his pet project. It's what he, the one thing when you asked him what he wants to see is the Parcel 9U be a part. Okay, it's, um, here's a thought. Don Kanabi is being turned out. He's okay. going to be what better way to honor his legacy than to name that the Don Kenobi Legacy Park? Okay, Burton Chase Park is named for one of his predecessors, and that would be great. He and he could drive by and proudly say, That's my park, I did something great on my way out, and it's what he everyone have, would have a gorgeous view of the boats. And it would not be another Marriott Hotel. We don't need three Marriott's. Yes. So where does that go? Is that a project or a note? She makes her recommendation or her suggestion was renaming it after the supervisor so to keep it part. So that's actually a considered a project because you're, you're talking about building a new project on a specific parcel. So, um, so it's a project. The edge of Mariners Village, there's a pocket park called the Aubrey, I believe it's Aubrey Park. And uh, it has a lot of coral trees that are beautiful, mature. Um, it's the only place that I can think of that has shade. People use it, kids use it, seniors use it, and there's currently a proposal to tear it all down and put a boat landing for yet another stop on our, you know, our boat route. Uh, although we already have adequate boat routes at the adjacent complex next door. So my request is leave that park alone, leave the trees in that park alone, even if you don't do anything. Don't, don't, you don't have to spend extra money on it to put any kind of new bells and whistles, but just leave it in place is, is one request. Um, for a boat landing. And then my, my other thing is, that my other comment is, something like the Yvonne Burke Park, which I've noticed being here for decades, I don't know how, unless you live at the Ritz Carlton, or you know, you're a visitor at the Ritz Carlton, or you go to the City Club, how do you access it? There's no parking that I'm aware of, and so really, there is. Comes, there is it's, it's, it's a small lot. Okay. So even even here, you know, the, the lots, if you can't get to the facility, then then it's has limited value, right? So you know, I know that you say we have X number of parks. But then I look at what we have, and I think, not really. Jeanette said she would send her video to me earlier, so I think we are capturing quite a bit here. But going back to what she said, that parking, lot that parking? I was talking about. Yes. I work in the film business, and I do quite a bit of shooting. Mm -hmm. okay. The Ridge Carlton takes half of the spots for home to the ballet. Let's so make sure that's clear. And okay. Parking, so it gets Taken by other, other purposes. Okay, so it's the Yvonne Burke. That'd be great. Yvonne Burke Park has parking, small and available, but sometimes being used by the purposes of other things not recreational and private use, right? So if we could even just approve that, that would be helpful because you'd have more people using it. Okay. And they need a restroom there because. If you're going to use the park, the Yvonne Park, you need a restroom. Okay. So, Yvonne Park Restroom Project. Okay. Thanks. Hi. I'm Dan Hamilton, and I retired from the government service. 
And I thank you, Mika, and uh, all the rest of the people from uh, Beaches and Harbors and LA Planning for the County Parks and Rec. And your management for, yes. for operations, is that correct? Yes. Management for operations? Yep. And uh, <clears throat> I want to thank Billy for speaking so well on the use of 9U. Uh, however, I disagree a little bit on some of the use because it's limited acreage. However, I would like to see that property retained and the hotel project plan to in 288 rooms or whatever completely scrapped. Right. Thank and you. that park taken over for wildlife use and for the establishment of viewing blinds and that no bulldozer or huge equipment be used for its renovation. It should be renovated by hand tools because hand tools don't destroy and remove us from the uh, need to protect the wildlife that's currently there. Uh, also, now that's one issue, is the acquisition of nine for wildlife. The other proposal I have is to improve the wildlife management of the county parks and rec so that they can include numerical assessments of the species that are present the time of year that they are present, and that recommendations be made from local observers, both employees of the county and non-employees, on how they can be improved to achieve goals. The way quality assurance works is really not simple, and it's not diverse from good management. You do an assessment, a measure, which is a measurement, you establish reasonable goals for what you're going to establish in terms of your populations if you're doing, you're doing a, a, say, a wetlands restoration or something, and then you measure your progress over time with corrective actions in place in order to achieve your goals. Right, what I'm here to say is not you, right, no hotel, protect the wetlands, right, and then um, do uh, evaluation across the county, really, about all of our natural areas. Okay, my name is Nancy Vernon Marino, I am the director of We Are Marina Del Rey, and the marina, in order, uh, my understanding is this meeting today is so that you can establish the needs, the local needs, for parks in Marina Del Rey, correct? Okay, uh, we need you to ask more than one child about those needs, or you're never going to know what those needs are. So, before you even write your report, I think you need to do an assessment of the children in this region, and not based on some jurisdictional boundary because the community of Marina Del Rey is wider than the study area. We need a, a full community participation in this before you write your report or your assessment is going to be at best incomplete. Uh, we need an integrated park system throughout the marina. One that is accessible, one is that, that is accessible by the community on foot. Um, so that the distances calculated need to be on uh, access routes and not across the water, which the water bus is only uh, sometimes available. It is, it is only seasonally and uh, then on weekends and, and uh, holidays to the local facilities. They need to be assessed separately from regional needs and regional needs, all of your regional meeting, meetings need to include Marina Del Rey so that you will know what all the needs are and not have it simply relegated to local needs. We also want to play, so we need playgrounds for children, for seniors, for seniors or for, for adults. We need adult playgrounds. So a giant slide idea that is integrated into the, uh, the waterfront promenade, maybe going over the buildings that we can't access because of boat launching. Uh, did you hear that project idea? Okay, exercise. Okay. She was talking about active seniors, right? She wants adults. Adults? Any age. Any age. Uh, but, but outside of you, okay? Any age, 18 and over. 
Are you talking about fitness stores, fitness areas? You said giants like play. Something where they can play outdoors. All right, adult size. Places to fly kites, places to camp. We need campgrounds. Um, we would like that. Did you get campgrounds back there? Is that separate, or is this kind of an example of separate than adult? Um, we need places for adults, children, families together, individuals, couples, whatever, places where people can get outside enjoy a natural environment and play without encroaching on that natural environment. Uh, so we need to distinguish between the passive open space that we can enjoy to look at and the active recreational facilities that will serve the needs of not just the local community but also all of the visitors to Marina Del Rey. We have over a thousand hotel rooms. Where are they going to play? So we have a lot of needs and we can't just simply concentrate all those needs into a single location or a single location intended to serve all of those needs. They need to be assessed so that there will be adequate space to satisfy all those needs and not get overburdened by one segment or the other. There is the outdoor play for adults. Camping areas, okay, and being mindful of, of our natural resources and protecting them, along with having the outdoor recreational play areas. Okay. Um, and then the only other thing I have to say, and in this, uh, I would like to see throughout the marina viewing platforms like the crow's nest over at Mariners Village, so that children and adults alike can get up and get an overview and see how everything interconnects the Viola wetlands, the marina, and the ocean. Thank you. All right, that's another project, guys. Did you hear that, Sheila? She would like some observation areas to the natural areas. Been brought out. I'm Marcia Hanscom with the Bionic Institute. And this right here is Burton Chase Park. So even though this looks like it's all very close to each other, it's not. There's thousands of residents, many thousands of residents between this side and this side. This side of the marina was promised many years ago to have a park, and it doesn't. This one has Burton Chase Park. What parks were that? So, well, it's been sort of a shell game as to which parcel it's been. It's been moved around. So then Billy, who very smartly said all of the things he'd like to see on this little four-acre parcel, he said it's big because it's the biggest open space we have, but not all those things can be there. So I want like to just make sure we do preserve this, not have a hotel, have it be open space, preserve mostly for wildlife, maybe have a walking trail around the edges for the children to be able to view, some, an interpretive trail for the birds, to, so you can see what birds and butterflies are there. There are a couple of other places where we could put some of the other uses that were brought up. For instance, there is a lot right here next to Oxford Lagoon, Lot 8. Lot 8 for a project idea for a park for maybe one of the other amenities, Lot 8. Right, and that park that was supposed to be its park parking, and again, we don't have enough parking, but maybe it could be a partial parking and a partial park. It was going to be a senior center, and the senior center has been withdrawn now. So we have some other senior centers in the area, but it could be a park. Okay. And then the other one is parcel FF, which is somewhere in here. Uh, maybe someone could come put, point it out. Lot 12, near Lot 12, another project idea. So my understanding is that even though it's fenced off as part of this development right now, it doesn't have to be. That was supposed to be a park for recreational needs. So if those two are preserved and that one for wildlife, then we get a start at having the kinds of things we need. And more importantly, even here in Burton Chase Park, we need to have more nature interpretive trails because otherwise, sometimes somebody come here comes and cuts all the tree limbs off and they don't realize there are birds that nest and roost there. Okay, I'm not. Okay, more trails around Burton Chase.
part that would be the little magic idea. Nature trails. Nature sorry about that. Okay, thanks. I would like our hands to Okay, all right. Hello, my name is Sheila Ginsburg. I'm a former Democratic teacher. I sympathize with the lack of space for children and for activities, and I think that these should be put closer to the school, and I think that all parcels should be left, every single one of them should be left as natural and wildlife areas. Nothing, should, nothing active should be done in those few places we have left, and that we can easily find a place for a senior center and a swimming pool outside of this particular area, just a little bit further to the east. And I'm sure that could be done. It would also accommodate the needs of the children who go to school close to there. But this, these are the last parcels we have. I, need, we, I think we really need to stop developing them. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Come on up. Hello, my name is Bev Sue Powers. And one of the things I'd like to elaborate on a little bit more is there's been mention of interpretive and, uh, parks and wildlife and viewing area. A lot more signage and what, whenever about what wildlife yep. to expect yep. there. And also native plants and landscaping. Whatever you're landscaping, invite wildlife to it so that, and then have interpretive signage on that. that